Hello, welcome, and good day to everybody. Happy modding, and thank you for joining. And just jumping right into it, uh, lovely day today. And uh, ahead of the usual stuff, I just wanted to say a really quick shout out to Smalio33, my better half. And yesterday we celebrated 15 years together. So really quick uh, love, uh, shout out to my wife, and yeah, rock and roll. Check that one off. Uh, and on that note, hopefully you can hear me. My setup looks good from my end. All right. Moving on. I'm going to check it. Because I think, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm good. Howdy, Gonzo. Good morning to you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you can hear me. Gonna take a moment to do another, <clears throat> excuse me, non-Morrowind thing. Real quick, I just wanted to give a shout out to, uh, sound good. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, Secret of Mana Turbo, which makes some, I think it's fair to say, controversial changes to the game Secret of Mana, the first of which is, uh, not the first, I guess, but the most noteworthy of which is it removes the cooldown while attacking. But it doesn't just do that. It removes the cooldown, but it also changes, like, how enemies attack, too, you know? So, like, you have to attack quickly, otherwise you're just going to get owned. So, yeah, just, uh, it has, like, a GUI installer that you can pick a bunch of options. You know, you just go with the default is probably fine, um but you can kind of go through and pick things out. Um, it really is a Secret of Mana mod pack, if you think about it. Um, highly recommend checking it out. Um, the installer works on Linux, too. If you got Mono installed, you just run the execute.exe uh, with Mono. Works fine. Uh, probably on a Mac, too, I would reckon. Um, so, yeah, non-Morrowind shout-out of the day. I love this patch. Um, it's not totally without issues. You can see there's 117 pages. This is, like, one of the longest threads I've ever seen. Um, not that I'm like a long timer on romhacking.net, but yeah, I mean, they don't usually get hundreds of pages long. There's lots of activity here. Um, there's some issues, but generally I think it, you could beat it easily start to finish. So shout out, respect to Q. And, uh, yeah, the chat overlay, I didn't actually get to before today's stream. So here we are overlay list. <laughs> um, but hopefully by next weekend we can get to that. So, uh, the first thing I wanted to look at today was uh, our friend Zach has a cat. Resident Lua Wizard has risen to the call, I guess, of uh, you know our last stream we had on Wednesday where we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, doing a, a Lua Multimark mod. And I mean, it's a reality. We have it. And uh, so I wanted to just install it and play with it, you know, uh, on the stream. So I guess we'll jump into that. First, let's go through the rest of the list. I wanted to also call out that um, there is now, I have successfully worked through some of the issues that I had before with uh, Benjamin Winger. Perhaps Benjamin Winger. Hey, Zach. Welcome, sir. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Um, make sure to update it. Will do. We'll get pushed before I uh, before I run that. Um, but yeah, worked through issues with Benjamin Winger about uh, Benjamin Winger about Delta plugin. Um, and I've now successfully generated custom normal grass and kelp and lily pads into ground cover with delta plugin um there is one sort of manual piece which is like finding the meshes but actually benjamin is already working on that delta plugin will soon have the ability to read and write dot bsa files um he was thinking about just like reading the vfs and copying the files as needed into like another data folder but i suggested possibly compressing into a bsa which I think would make it easier. You know, you just have one file and you add the fallback archive. Um, and it should be easy then for anybody with any setup to make custom ground cover files for their setup. And actually for me, um, on my gaming PC, it took, there's a certain view in Satanine, and I'll just fire it up right now. We can witness the potato in all of its glory together. There's a certain view in Satanine, though, when you're facing the ship. That was like... I don't know, like some built-in potato feature that would extra potato if I even my good setup with my 5700 XT, which at this point, granted, is a bit of an old GPU, but yeah, come on, it's no potato. Um, 
but I actually was able to gain almost, you know, nine FPS on my gaming rig there, which being closer to 20 makes it feel a lot less chuggy, you know, it goes a long way. To me, that's a pretty huge gain. Um, and I did notice a boost here on my on my high-end potato, my framework laptop with the Intel integrated graphics, um, which for what it is, is good, but yeah, ooh, it's a potato, no doubt. Doing good on RAM, though. Okay. A big oof on the potato side here. So when I'm not streaming, this is about 20 FPS looking this way. But yeah, we clearly, we got beautiful cities of Morrowind loaded up in here. And here is one of the subjects of the, whoops, I'm not drunk, I swear. One of the subjects of the ground coverification. You can see the kind of stomp effect working on this vanilla grass thingy and the one here in front of Fargoth's house. Stomping on through it. So yeah, anyways, the, the nuts and bolts of that is uh, basically summed up in a file I have here, which is a shell script I wrote to just automate generating these from my mod lists. But what we have here is basically this one. This Delta plugin call will read your config file and it will modify records that match the pattern of grass, kelp, or lily pad, and it will move them into the grass folder. This one right here will take the non-ground cover records and update their models to be editor markers, so my favorite one weird trick for making things invisible without deleting them. And then what's missing here then would be the third step to generate a BSA, which would have, which would read your load order, it would figure out what files are demanded by your various mods um, and, and put them in a, in a way you could use them. So for me, um, I have here come up with just a list of things that work for my setup just because I wanted to see it work. And yeah, so we've got vanilla Morrowind files. Some stuff from Project Atlas could have easily come from vanilla Morrowind. Um, Adenumarin Reclaimed, which is a 6.x edition coming soon, has one file. You know, I kind of wonder about this. Is this like legit grass? So I got to find it in game, see where it is. And, and, and double check it. Um, but yeah, BCOM has a couple grass files that again, I think I should check before we kind of call it, you know, a done deal, immersive mournhold. Also, optimization patch could have easily came from vanilla and some of these are only used in the expanded vanilla setup like these lily pads. On total overhaul, they come from, you know, lily pad replacer by Ramiros, um, epic plants. So yeah, you know, there's roughly nine different mods that are providing files that we need to care about. Um, Having users go through this process of gathering these would be extremely painful, you know, and I seriously considered writing some small Go program to do it, but thankfully, there's no need. Benjamin Winger is working on it. Uh, we have uh, the addition of, just pull this up here, in progress edition of basically the ability to read the VFS from Delta Plugin. So yeah, coming soon. Very exciting. And uh, and again, you know, it was it was a worthy endeavor, I think, because... You know, on a very cluttered scene, I saw a double-digit percentage-wise FPS game again. So, yeah, cool stuff. Very, very cool stuff. All right, now let's... Uh, and then, and then yeah, before we uh, close the stream today, we're going to do the first half of the hour. We'll spend um, taking care of some issues. There was something Gonzo filed about Tomb of the Snow Prince and, and ground cover. We could easily improve that before we put a bow on 5.8. Um, and then the second hour we'll spend looking at 6.x stuff and, uh, and I'll share a couple of things I found as I've been playing and then we'll deploy the website as needed. So yeah. All right. Uh, my excitement cannot contain me. Lua Multimark. Let's do it. And I'm going to just, I'm real quick, just going to load this into my minimal performance setup, uh, doing some NCGD bug hunting and some developing. We'll go ahead and just stash all that. That's uh, as recommended by Zach. <laughs> Nine minutes in, already at 60. You know, thank you for noticing, Gonzo. It didn't even click with me, but you're absolutely right. Because a lot of this was just like, hey, you know, bring this up to them, you know, and let's just chit-chat about it, which I'm, you know, trying to keep it reasonable. Like this one here, Issues Wrap-Up, this one will probably balloon into a couple of things. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, <laughs> feels good. We're going to have three 100% in a row, and I'm trying to arrange that deliberately because it goes, feels good to, you know, finish things, actually. All right, anyways. Let's go back into gameplay. Where did I put this? Uh, I guess I could, all right. 
It's just called Multimark. All right, I am having a brain fart right now, totally forgetting where I put this. Apparently nowhere. All right, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We'll just clone that anew then. And I'll go ahead and uh, pull that up. On, uh, and if you are not following Zach as a cat on GitLab, you know, do that. Uh, get access to the wizardry. So here we are. Okay, we got a multi-mark ESP. Good, good. Curious what's in there. Not going to look immediately, though. And I can't see the chat at the moment. All right, here we go. Game clone. Uh, I'm just going to leave it multi-mark. I was debating giving it like a Lua dash name, but... There's no need, I think. It's already distinct from the other one. All right, here we go. Let's go throw that in there. And, um, you know, I care about multi-mark because, in my opinion, um, it's sort of like D... I don't know. Like, for me, walking around everywhere is cool, but at the same time, like, it is... Like, I think about Witcher 3... And, and you don't get to just, like, teleport for free everywhere. You, you got to go to, like, a signpost. But it's, like, a reasonable... You know, and I hope we have that eventually in Morrowind, too. Um, but, yeah, in my opinion, these multi-mark mods are a nice take on, like, making travel less grueling. Zach says the ESP is the original multi-mark with only the magic effects, GMST, and creatures. Uh, the creatures being used for the effect. Um, and the spells, enchantments. Cool, cool, very cool. Uh, Gonzo says, multi-mark feels really necessary after you use it once. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, and to that end, Zach, tell me about this. I don't know if you ever played Witcher 3, or uh, if you're familiar with the travel system in it, but it has a travel system whereby you can um, hit a signpost to activate like a fast travel menu. I mean, are we far enough along to be able to do that. I didn't, uh, you know, we're about to see this now, but it seems like you have an input box for the multi-mark mod. I didn't know we were far enough along to have that. That's insane. Um, Gonzo, I think I've seen a mod for that. Awesome. Is it MWSE, I assume? Um, but I think we should have that. That's, in my opinion, a balanced approach at fast travel, really. Lua multi-mark. Assuming it was MWSC, also Gonzo says, yeah. They get the cool stuff, that's for sure. We're getting there, though, thanks to people like Zach. All right, let's fire this up. Mm. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let's just get in the game first. Okay. Big goodbye on the screen a little bit. Having a hard time seeing it because the sun is doing the being out thing right now. Zach says, there is an input box, but you have to be in menu mode to use it. So I just took the key entries and modified the string. <laughs> Very clever, man. <laughs> I love that. There's no way to enter menu mode via Lua yet. Ugh, okay, yeah, that's something I've been waiting for for a minute. Um, Being able to do this, basically. We cannot do it. At the moment. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let's... All right. Whoa. Hold up there. All right. Mark. All right. So, we got the greater mark effect you can see there. All right. And so, let's, uh, let's just cast it. Okay. I feel like I whoops, I feel like I need to be in third person for this. <laughs> the goofy. The mod page the mod page, Gonzo says, doesn't specify if it's MWSC exclusive. I mean it could be MW script. I've seen weirder things. Uh, natural character growth and decay itself is like a something that shouldn't exist in MW script, yet it does, so. Alright, let's try to All right, hold up. Some something's not right. Oh, you know what? I probably need to update my build. T 
teleport summon mark. Yeah, Zach. <laughs> Is that it? Do I need to update my build? Let me know. Did I enable the ESP? I did. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, he says. All right, cool. We will come back to that. And thank you kindly, Resident Lua Wizard. It's happening. Need to add a OMW add-on file. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll get back to that then. This is exciting, though. Uh, you know, I love the, like, the birthing of this idea during the stream a couple of days ago, and then this guy goes and, like, implements it like it ain't no thing, you know? So I love that. Let's keep it going, shall we? And I'm curious, too, if you know if you're Raven Rock, um, not to, like, throw a million things at you, man, if you're Raven Rock Distant Dynamics, it works with Tomb of the Snow Prince. I assume yes. All right, let's take a look at this guy here while Zach is working his magic. So somebody came out of Discord and was a little confused about, uh, hey, Lua Multimark. Yeah, welcome. Let's see. Elta 3L, welcome. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the chat and to the stream. We're just uh, doing some stuff here. Oh, Gonzo says, wait, the mod page is tagged OpenMW, actually. Interesting. Wow, really cool. Okay. That's always good to see. And yeah, we're just playing around with some Lua Multimark. Very exciting. Uh, <laughs> all right, sorry, you didn't, but it's okay. All right, thank you. I... <laughs> Please forgive me. I have a name that people mispronounce a lot, too, so I feel, like, self-conscious when I do it. Huh, okay, I'm already, apparently, Gonzo, I'm apparently already tracking this one. Why did I not ever use it? Add fast travel to Morrowind in the form of signposts. Wow, Zach says fixed. Awesome. All right, let's go back real quick to this multi-mark. We'll do just a real quick get pull. Got this uh, OMW add-on. We'll swap out the ESP. Saves in your data directory. Yeah, yeah, darn OpenWCS saves in your data directory. I love and also uh, get annoyed by that feature, you know. <laughs> it's happened to me a couple of times. Now I'm, like, working with it regularly enough that I will notice it when it happens. But, yeah. Good old foot gun. All right. Let's try it again. Lua Multimark. Here we go. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned a few times what are the benefits of doing this with... Why do we have to do this with Lua? And one is, yeah, of course, just compatibility with everything. Um, which is a huge pain with the MW script one. I mean, like, enormous pain. todd size pain. Just ow pain. All right. Let's go in the... All right. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is by the way, this is the animation I was talking about. <laughs> hey Fane. Hey. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to the stream. We're just uh, doing the Morrowind dance. This is what I call the the Morrowind version of the electric slide, I guess. I don't know. Woohoo. All right. Anyway, back to the yeah, we're just, uh, we're, the pain we're doing right now is experimental Lua-based multi-mark by Zach, the Lua wizard. So, join us. Yeah, just look at this. Ooh, it looks even more awkward when you're walking. Wow, that's great. Uh-oh, what happened, Zach? Did I break it? I think I got everything. I don't know. Can you see that, man? We got a Lua exception here. All right. Zach's going to check it. I'm going to have a sip of my Kefir. I'm so hyped about this. As I had said before, main appeal, compatibility with everything. Whether you're going to TR, maybe you got MD's Lithonia loaded up because, I mean, why wouldn't you? I used to use that. But anything, really. Any mod that adds an interior. 
there's just too much to even think about, you know? And just out of curiosity, let's uh, check what's in your OMW scripts file. Two player scripts and a global. Should be easier to see. There should be a win file in there. Yeah, it's one of, one of the player scripts. What? Oh my god, what's happening? Emacs, what are you doing to me? Is this file empty for real? You got some uncommitted file? Failing to compile it reload Lua. Alright. Alright, well let's check the log again. Yeah, it appears to be empty. Oh. Oh, well, that path is wrong. Scripts. Ah, okay. I thought that it was supposed to be not case sensitive. Um, but I bet you that's what it is. Lua. Multi. Mark. And for posterity, not empty. All right. In we go again. Back to the testing zone. Here we go. All right. I'm just a controller interface. Is that expected? This looks like it's from your win script. Um, let's go ahead and cast a spell. Hmm, same. It won't work, Zach says. Okay, yeah. Well, I hope this is, uh, I hope this is good feedback. I can paste it in the chat if you want. Let me know. Oh, you fixed it? Okay, right. I mean, no, so don't worry about it. This is awesome. This is like uh, pair programming, you know, which is one of my favorite activities. Uh, except for you're doing all the programming. <laughs> so props. Uh, can I say, uh-oh. What did I do? Oh. There we go. Okay. I wonder if it's going to... Go ahead and. All right, here we go. I hit enter. Come on. Oh man. Cool. So let me uh maximize a little bit. There we go. Wow. So So you stop the player movement though. That's cool. You like it's like the poor man's pause menu. <laughs> That's really creative. Yeah, very nice, right? A fan says, ooh, nice. I agree. So let's uh, uh rename. Wow, that's cool. Type name. I don't even wow <laughs> this is so awesome it will fix uh he'll fix camera movement too awesome well i mean this is what i'm talking about like we don't have like an api to pause the game but you you know you pause the game <laughs> actually let me so i assume ai keeps 
plugging along, which I think is fair, right? You don't want to, like, in the middle of a fight, you know, like, it's a little cheesemo. Um, or maybe you'll fix that. Boom! Look at that! Beautiful! That's so beautiful. Let's go ahead and uh, make a couple more mark points. Wow! This is so awesome. Mad props, Zach. That menu is really cool. Time is paused completely while I'm... See, you, like... This is awesome. We don't have a way to pause the game with the Lua API properly, but, you know, this guy. There's no stopping Zach. He just did it. He just did it. This is amazing. This is really amazing. Did I say that before? Ooh. Did something happen? It wouldn't save my other ones. Or do I... Is it, uh, is it doing the whole... You can change the simulation scale. Oh, okay, so you just change the sim scale down to zero and then go back to whatever it was. Nice, that's cool. Okay, enter, cancel, backspace. All right, so what's happening here, though? I maybe have a very weak mysticism skill. I do. Look at me. I'm just a jabroni. Ha! All right. Uh, the mar it did work, but it didn't, like, set more of them, and I assume maybe you're scaling based on mysticism, but maybe not. If not, that's a feature request, my friend. So, yeah, I'm just going to plop a couple more marks down. Yeah, I'm just getting one. You have an unlimited number of marks. It should allow it. Okay, well, there we go. On to the next one, eh? Check my log. Sure thing. Let me actually properly pause it. Nothing really in there. And you're up and down. Okay. There's something there though, right? Like, just, it's not putting the text. So if I hit enter here. So they worked. They worked. Just the menu's a little goofed at the moment, I think. But yeah, the up and down arrows actually do work. We can go here. Ooh, Lua Multimark is a reality. We're here, folks. This is super exciting. Um, I can say confidently this is the first that I know of, the first Lua Magic mod. So, Actually, you have the Detect Keys one, Zach, right? So that might be the first Lua Magic mod. Anyway, Lua Wizard, like I said. Boom, here we are, folks. Minor menu bug at the moment. That's totally something that is resolvable. Um... Poor Tar Heel, yeah. <laughs> I always feel guilty walking over there when I'm testing, and uh, except for when I don't. He could use Lua Mark and Recall. He could use Lua a lot of things. He could. I know that there's a there's a AF Fresh quest involving him, which I haven't done yet. But I always wanted like a another take on Tar Heel, so it's awesome that uh, AFFA kind of rose to that call. Lua Multi Mark, very exciting. Zach, I don't know if you also want to update this uh, OMW scripts file too, just to make it um, the right case. I guess Mac isn't. I think you use a Mac. I guess Mac isn't um, case sensitive. But yeah, it's poor folks on Linux. This I feel like is a bug. Maybe it uses a different parser than the CFG, but the CFG file is supposed to be case insensitive now on 0 0.49. So I feel like maybe this is a bug. Maybe I'll bring it up in the dev channel. Um, but yeah, we'll need that. Until then, we'll need that to match reality. So Lua Multimark by Zach Has a Cat. Happily, you know, putting a, a check on that one. That's amazing. Uh, oh, what do we got here? Tamina Rebel also has a Tar Heel quest, if I didn't know. Alta 3 So Yes, actually, I know about that uh, because I read the comments in AFresh. But otherwise, I didn't know about that. Um so definitely something I need to check in my next run through. Zach says it is case insensitive. Error before is incorrect includes. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, let's go back here and just and yeah, just ignore me about that. Then we'll kill that change. Eltario. Did I say that right that time? All right, I'll get it. Fix it anyways, though. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, no worries. Um, I'm sure it works. I'm actually about to try it right now. Yeah, awesome. El Terrio, awesome. Cool. Thank you for bearing with me on that. And so what am I looking for here? Right here at the very top. You can see it's loading just fine. 
You don't need to change it, Zach. It's totally fine. I'm just a spaz. That's all. I'm just goofing. This right here loads just fine. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Lua Multimark. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to the official release of this. Um, you know, I've already moved my personal setup over to 0.49 because I'm a big baby and I can't live without cool stuff. All right. Awesome. Awesome. That's too cool. Too, too cool. All right. Issues wrap up for 5.8. Yeah. So going back to this uh, Tomb of the Snow Prince. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah, this too. Andromeda's Fast Travel. I actually want to take a quick look at this. If you folks don't mind, let's do that. So this again. Yeah, this is so cool. This reminds me a lot of the... um. The Witcher 3 fast travel, where you can hit up the travel sign. And Zach says, I can tell you why it was empty before it uses cell names. You were in a cell with no name. Hadn't included the region name yet. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, cool. We got a handle on it. Uh, original upload in 2012, updated in 2019. Not very hopeful. Well, I mean, so here's the thing, too. And a Lua v version of this would be better because, again, instant compatibility with basically everything. You know, you can find, like, the... You can find the signpost mesh. You can use, I don't know, the activation interface to attach an activation script like I do with my um, abandoned flat containers. You know, you can just use the activator activation handler. Um, so, I mean, in theory, this would be doable with Lua, I would expect, because we have teleport capabilities. Man, Zach, if you're not going to do this, I might do this signpost fast travel. But if you feel like it, that's another good one. Witcher 3 fast travel. All right, I'm going to actually fire this up, though, because I want to see... So let's go and uh, let's make a new category called travel. I think I'm going to move my airship files under travel. It's more agnostic than vehicles, and it they belong together, right? Travel. All right. Travel it is. So I don't, yeah, expect this to be very compatible, unfortunately, be very compatible with things. You know, it's just kind of the nature of the old ways, MW script. <clears throat> but we can still have fun and try it out. All right. Just a little plugin. Oh. Don't try that at home. All right. It's my, like, control Watt T, I think. Yeah, an Emacs. <laughs> it does, like, a switcheroo on something. One of these days I'll look up what it does. Okay. So, in theory, we could just go up to a signpost. This is a pretty vanilla setup. We just go up to a signpost, activate it, I guess. Let's see. Boom. Too cool. I mean, I love this, frankly. Yeah, right? Whoa, Gonzo says, I say whoa indeed too. And I think we need a Lua version of this. It just works, Todd. <laughs> yeah, we need Todd emoji in the chat. I need to not be lazy about my uh about my twitchness. But this is so cool. I I you know, there's I can't really find anything to not like about this except um where it has placed us here, so one criticism I might have is where it's placed us. There's no, like, other signposts. Like, oh, how do I get out of here now? I guess there's a ship over here, Silt Strider over here. You know, I should stop being a baby. But, yeah, let's let's go back to Satanine and see, like, what else we can click. You know, can we, like, click our way to Balmora? Also feels a little OP if you haven't actually been to Balmora, because that's one thing about Witcher. You can't just, like, teleport to some place you haven't been. You know, you have to actually, like, go to the signpost you want to go to. Travel to Hilaod. Hours traveled. Okay, so that's cool, though. It, like, properly adjusts time. That's something to think about. It You're not literally just teleporting there. I love, honestly, I love that. And here we are by a signpost. So that's the thing. Maybe, you know, over by Vivek, there isn't a signpost over there. Maybe one could put one in there. Caldera. 
No, 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 no. We're going to go to Caldera. Yeah. It's so cool that it adjusts time. Eight hours. You know, um, my main gripe, though, is, yeah, it shouldn't let you go places where you haven't been. And so you could do that with the Lua API by, say, um, um, El Tariel says, it's a bit OP in the early game if there's no risk. Yeah, yeah, there's, ba there's basically no risk. You just walk into the sign, click on it. It spends time. The main risk for, with that being if you're using, like, a natural character growth and decay, you got decay switched on. Spending time is putting you closer to decay, but that's, like, not a really a big deal, I don't think. Um, but still, so with a Lua API, you could, like, say when the player enters a cell, you know, um, if it's a cell that has, you know, uh, a sign or a destination for a sign, you would have to do some fiddling, but you could say, oh, okay, well, the player has been here now. They can use this as a destination, it would be totally be doable with Lua, and I think I'm going to try to do it. Should be doable for 0 0.48, too. Uh, well, that activator interface, activation interface is 0 0.49 only, so it may be 0 0.49 only, unfortunately, kids. Um, very nice, though. I'm surprised at how well this works, and we actually learned a little bit by looking at it, right? If I'm going to implement this in Lua, we got to see how somebody else did it. Um, and they did it well. Props to the author here. Uh, let's see who made this. Andromeda's Fast Travel by SG Monkey. Uh, you know, props to them. This is a really cool idea. Um, you can use on activate engine handlers access for 0 0.48. Interesting. Okay, so maybe I'll, I will target 0 0.48. You need to be able to change time. Check my Zacutils mod to be able to do that. You can't do it with Lua yet. I see. Okay, thank you for the feedback, Zach. That's interesting. It's probably some MW script ping pong then, which is somewhat awkward, but it could be worse. I won't make the mod, but I'd be happy to help. Cool. Awesome, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm for sure going to work on it, so uh, we'll talk more. Cool. We'll look it on the stream. Maybe if I I got stuff to do today, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it tonight, but um, maybe tomorrow night. Just admiring that night sky, huh? Isn't that great? So cool, we got Lua Multimark, signpost fast travel probably coming soon from yours truly. I'm just going to take a look at how to implement that. Awesome. That's very exciting. Very, very exciting. All right. Uh, I would encourage you to check this out. I feel like this is a good addition to a setup. You know, if you're not unfriendly, uh, if you're not unfamiliar with the game, it is a little OP to have it early on, but, you know, if you play the game... It's not that big of a deal, and, and it could make travel a little, a little less burdensome. But yeah, with the Lua version, I definitely intend to have a mechanic where I would limit it to where you've already been, which would take some research, obviously. Cool. Okay, so going back to this now. And Gonzo was kind enough to basically summarize everything here and also provide... a. Uh, suggestion for editing so that's really great thanks gonzo props i really appreciate that and so we say if you're following any mod list oh no we say the ground cover plugin can be found here and we just leave it at that but uh, gonzo has elaborated extract this plugin into the zero 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 core folder hey i like that nice and simple easy for somebody to just kind of plunk it in there and it doesn't hurt anything so I like that. I mean, ship it, in my opinion. Let's add it. Okay, so... That would be in the land masses. Okay, and so yeah, this is where I... Uh, can be found here. Extract the plugin. I think that's it, right? Short and sweet. Yeah. And I like to put those in a code block just to make them more, you know. Okay. On over to the E shell, we'll recrunch the database and just take a quick look at that. Mm, we 
worth the change log entry? Yay, nay. I think probably, yeah. Let's not be lazy. fail cool yeah we'll add this one undo the 5.8 changes I didn't, uh, I didn't change the updated date on that one, so I'm not going to be able to find it that way. I will change that before we commit. So what else? What else is a burning issue that we have? I think that one was filed recently, so want to take care of it. This one I think we can close now, actually, Gonzo. This one about uh, naturalized and BCOM area of our friend area of effect arrows. Gonzo says I should convert Sotha's mods and start learning how to write Lua. Yeah, you should totally. Lua is a great little language. Um, it's fun to work with. OpenMW Lua API has a lot of like things that make it, you know, relatively easy to work with and iterate on, you know, having reload Lua. Zach Utils has a bunch of cool stuff. Um, Herdrax, who couldn't join us today, actually has a guide he's working on, he said, for how to do cool in-game stuff with Zach Utils. I'm really pumped to see about that. But yeah, you totally should. And, um, you know, hop into the Lua channel on the OpenMW server and just kind of join the chat. You know, we're in there talking about things and doing things, you know. So that's probably where I'll have my chat about the signpost work. When I get to doing that. Um, yeah, I think a lot of these actually, Claire, I think a lot of these are things that we have. We could like close this one probably. Yeah, so two weeks ago, I got commits on a lot of these. So we'll have to go through and um, just double check all of these and make sure that they're. Excuse me, they're handled, and if not, we handle them. Excuse me, close it up. So did we do this about the interior mist toggle? And also, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not a problem on 0 0.49, right? Do we know? Let's find out. Thought we did, right, I thought we did too. Um, real quick, let me just see if it is a problem on 0 0.49, because I kind of think it's not... Yeah, yeah, I kind of think it's not. Shaders.yaml. Yeah, I wrote a note here. This is an unfortunate hack. Just disabling things for bug reasons is always depressing, right? So, undisable it. Whoop, whoop. 
but not break the YAML formatting. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, where is my terminal? Oh no. What happened? Here we go. Okay. Um, okay. Here we go. Ooh, you know what? Wait, I don't actually have that shader installed here. Bad test. Oop. Here we go. So, if we see anything, we're no, we're, we will know we're good. If we can't see anything because of a black screen, we will know we're not good. <clears throat> I seem to recall it is fixed, though. Nope, nope, def definitely not fixed. Here we go. Woof. All right. We'll go back to that, and let's uh, post processing of interior. Yeah, I don't think we added anything here. There is no mention. Let's go look at the content on the website. Well, this should be ready now. Last updated today. Yippee. We'll check that change log. I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Cloud. Okay. Yeah, we don't actually say anything here. So, I think we should... <laughs> I think we should put a little blurb in between these two paragraphs and just say, you know, we tell, we say shaders are enabled, enabled and configured with F2 key while in game, maybe on the same paragraph, say, yeah, right. Or in the, or the next paragraph right there, we tell them about F2 because they're going to need to know how to use F2 to disable this. So yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Trying to think how to word this. Uh, And then I'll link to our GitLab thread here. Mm. Okay. Yet again, churn that database. And that's what we want to see. Okay. And I'll try to, when I do the git commit, I will try to remember to um, reference the issue. Is there an FAQ troubleshooting page that should be added as well, Gonzo says? Hmm. That's a good question, right? And I think this goes back to what I was talking about Wednesday when I said, do we need like a things you need to know page? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. It's on the table for sure. Right, like, if we could have, like, a summary for mod lists of, like, things, settings you should need to check, right? Like, there should be a reminder of it there. Because we do in the CFG generator, for example, provide settings you need for, you know, UI mods or whatever. Um, this feels like it could fit there. 
Hey, Fane says, like a pre-flight checklist. Right, exactly. Something, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what I was have in mind. Uh, that's what I had in mind for something like the things you need to know list, right? Like if you're totally uninitiated, coming into Morrowind modding with OpenMW, what is what are the things you need to know that are going to make your life easy? And I think... Um, it's worth doing that, right? And just having a quick thing about like, this is how you, you know, activate shaders real quick. This is how you turn their features on and off or whatever, you know, just a quick, something like that could be, because it's not complicated at all, right? Just open the menu and move them around. Okay, here we go. You will need to enter the F2 menu to disable this shader's interior mist feature as it can cause the screen to be black when spawning in an interior related issue. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to sleep on that pre-flight checklist idea, but it's something absolutely I think we need to flesh out our user's guide. Get people, you know, on their journey, well-equipped to have fun, but also, you know, have a good, correct setup. We absolutely need to do that. Okay, but for now, this, I think, satisfies that. So, let's see. Yeah, I didn't commit this yet. So, let's say, okay, um... And we'll reference the I'm being a good person here and I'm gonna properly reference the issue. Yay! All right, cool. Awesome. Okay, uh, and then let's bump the updated here. Updated 23. Wow, we've had volumetric fog for like a year now that's so crazy to think about and clouds i was admiring the clouds yesterday and uh just a reminder we don't use the clouds because with the clouds you don't have stars moons and other things at nighttime which are things that i miss so we're not quite there yet all right Worth a change log. Nope. Maybe somebody skipped this before because they couldn't. Maybe they were able to figure out, you know, that it was the clouds. Um, but they weren't able to figure out how to turn it off. Um, Gonzo says, it looks awesome as fog, though. Yeah, absolutely. That volumetric fog, just perfect. You can easily argue that the fog in Morrowind and the OG release is atmospheric. And it absolutely is, uh, even if it is just a technical limitation that we justify in that way. But, but... When you replace it with like an actually atmospheric fog like Zesterers, whoa, you know, turns out, yeah, there is something to that idea. Like having a foggy Morrowind like that, it works. It's how it's supposed to be, I feel like. All right. What are we, what are we looking at here? Zesterers. Change log. Okay. We need to see what all you, lots of things use this. Very good. Very, very good. Yeah, I like to explain that. One day. All right. Yeah, my favorite thing to do when I'm playing around with, when I actually switch the clouds on just to see them and drool over them, I love actually, like, flying up into them. If you've never done this, you should try it. Fly up into them, and they actually, like, you know, react, they swirl around, and, I mean, you can be in the clouds, which is really cool. They're not just, like, statically there, part of the, the mesh of the sky. You can go and join the clouds. Uh, okay, that's not the right name, though. Okay. Updated to include information about to say. Same effect story as in Silent Hill. Based on computing limitations that ended up being iconic, Efane said. Yeah, you know, and Gonzo actually brought up Silent Hill. Uh recently when we were talking about a uh, creepy atmospheric foggy because we had uh, some like wildfire fog in our area and we're supposed to have more today but yeah it definitely was super creepy to look across the street and it's like foggy i've never in my life seen it like that and it's foggy and and creepy like silent hill <laughs> in not really a good way okay including from okay
I think it's about that time where I drop my desk down. Please excuse me for a moment. this off because we're doing it we fixed a few things already tomb of the snow prince now this if my slow database will just hurry up a little bit there we go thank you and we'll have a change log for this and we'll call it a day on this one excuse me Whew. pardon me Cool. All right. Informative. Accurate. Complete. One forty. All right. Cool. And just real quick. Run the test suite real quick before I push it up. Excuse me. Hmm. I wonder what activity was on this one. Why did it say this one was updated? Oh, I guess, well, yeah, I guess this is just when I put my response on there. Okay. We're not going to do that one. Force per pixel lighting. Oh. This is a good point. Yeah, we'll do this one too. Uh, once the tests are done crunching. Um, and so basically, it's to explicitly state... <clears throat> I think this actually gets enabled automatically when you, uh, you know, set shaders on in the GUI. I think there's a GUI option for it in the game. And I think that gets turned on automatically. And... Uh, I mean, I'm tempted to just disable all this and let's just see what happens. What is the vanilla OpenMW experience like with all shaders off? I don't remember. It's been a minute. Oh no. <laughs> all right, well this isn't exactly vanilla. This is expanded vanilla. Good enough though. But yeah, I seem to recall Wazabear saying that he had coded it such that when you turn on shaders, because you need it, you know, it gets turned on. Same with Reverse Z, I think, also. Looks like I have shaders here, not going to lie. Oh, processing on. Okay.
didn't change it to on automatically. So yeah, I think it's worth a mention. That's got to be on. Um, there's no in-game option for it either. I was wrong. There may be a launcher option for it. Let's see here. Yeah, that doesn't work though. All right. I think there's a launcher option for per pixel lighting. Almost positive. There we go. Visuals. Shaders. Yeah, we you know, we need a like a global search thing for the launcher. We really do. Hmm. Surely it wouldn't be a game mechanic. No. Okay, good. That makes sense. Okay, well, there's nothing even in the launcher either, which is unfortunate. So we do need to refer people to editing their settings. Definitely worth a mention. And we'll just amend this since it's going to be... No sense having two entries for the same thing in a row. And we're right here. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking underneath our new paragraph we just added, another paragraph where we state, in your settings.cfg, you need this, and then we'll have the extra CFG. Well, maybe we don't need to put it in the usage notes then since we will have the extra CFG section. Yeah, that's it. So we actually have implementation detail time. We have two extra CFG fields on a mod. Why two? Uh, one that gets shown on the mod detail page right here. And the other one is what gets shown on the CFG generator. And uh, why different? Because the one on the CFG generator is just plain text. And the one that we put on the page is formatted HTML. There could be a way to like make them one, and I would definitely love to do that. I just never did it. <laughs> so here we are, living with that decision I made long ago. All right. Uh, this is definitely not true. Shaders for per pixel lighting. All right. Let's see that in action. That's a good call out too. Something that, uh, as I was kind of like in the when shaders first dropped, and then eventually out of nowhere, Zester came out and gave us this volumetric cloud and mist mod. You know, we just it was a very exciting time. <laughs> Lua shaders all kind of happened. You know, within the span of a few months. Somebody here's got some comments about natural character growth and decay. Um, Certainly has done some good homework about how, uh, just pointing out how the mod doesn't resemble vanilla leveling very much, um, and that's definitely true. And uh, one of the things uh, I uh, am working on at present for Natural Character Growth and Decay is actually putting like the maths of the mod behind an interface so that somebody could then in turn mod those. And uh, actually there is a contributor who's got merge requests open, our friend uh, Mehdi Youssef here. 
and he's done the work of rethinking level computation and health points, um, which is really awesome, you know, and I'm super grateful to have somebody care as much as I do about this mod to improve it. Um, cause yeah, you could definitely, it is a little, it was always a little silly to play natural character growth and decay. And with my personal class that I play with, if you, if you do, for example, a Breton with this class, which is very magic heavy, you'll come out level three starting a new game, which is a little, you know, it could be a little jarring. Um, so it's cool to have some more thought, you know, I didn't actually adjust any of Grey Wander's maths. I just ported them as is, you know, I'm not that. I'm happy with the way it is, but certainly I'm also happy to encourage and use a new take. I will be using Meta Yusuf's work here. Um, Minode, Meta Yusuf Minode's work. I will absolutely use it. It is going to be included in Natural Character Growth and Decay as an optional preset that you can select in the script menu. And the nice thing about making it an interface is anybody will then be able to make a Lua mod that is a mod of this. You know, mod your mod, yo dog. Um, but yeah, that's the cool thing about the interface system of uh, OpenMW Lua 2. All right, going back here. Okay. Extra CFD. Here we go. Oh, OpenMW 0.48. Newer required. Additionally, the following needs to be added to your shaders section in the blah, blah, blah. Boom. There it is. And then just for posterity, since we put it in there. That footer link was a good idea. Susters. Excuse me. Yay, there it is. Ooh, <laughs> that's not... Ooh, whoops. <laughs> that's not right. Bad copy pasta. Don't try that at home. My folks. Okay. That is what we want. And we're going to do another change log bump. Whoop! Whoa, fat fingering. <laughs> okay, cool. Very, very good. That's a good call out from our friend uh, Andre. Andrej. I probably said that completely wrong. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is the one I've got open on another tab. Cool. That'll be one we can close up, Gonzo, I'm sure. Uh, let's see here. This is one that I gotta do still, I think. Yeah, this is one I gotta look at more closely. Favorite issue tag, needs closing. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Honestly, me too. This one I gotta review again from Settiness. This one too. I gotta make sure we go through these and, and actually clean these out. Um, Roman wanted to add this one. We should add this one too for posterity. I don't recommend MCA on any list, but it'd be good to, uh, you know, um, if you're somebody that wants to run MCA and friends and foes and repopulated Morrowind, because why not? You know, my, my hat is off to you. <laughs> so we should put it on there too. Um, yeah, Ronick also sec seconding the request. Okay, wow. Wow, okay. People like this setup, so I'm going to... We'll get this handled. Not today. We're not doing this one today. But it's going to be handled. Boom, fixed. Okay, good. 
So, all right. Uh, and let's go to the... Six seven. All right. Tagging quite a few issues here. This is nice. Three different issues tagged. Feels good, man. Okay. Let's go back here now, real quick. Fix test. Ooh, really need to do this one. Um. Oh, El Tariel says this patch. That patch actually isn't for MCA compatibility, but it fixes a missing mesh issue for both MCA and friends and foes. You don't need to use MCA. Oh, so I totally misunderstood that. Thank you for. For clarifying, I totally misunderstood that. I had a doubt as I was reading it out loud, too. Let's take a look at it. Interesting. Oh, because Danae no doubt used MCAs. I even remember seeing MCA paths in Friends and Foes, so okay. Oh, interesting. Inability to clean the OMW add-on. Interesting. <laughs> I'll have to speak with Roman. Maybe we can... Uh, we can. It's very easy to edit an OMW add-on to remove masters. So, I mean, you, you know, we could remove all of these masters pretty easily. Um... Interesting. Okay, so where exactly is this? Tashby. Is that as easy as editing the YAML, Gonzo asks. Removing masters? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see if I have any YAML here. Yeah, okay. I was examining uh, Himaris's turn normal grass into ground cover. And yeah, so for example, uh, if there was something else listed here, yeah, you just, boom, you delete it. Like if we wanted it to have no masters, we could just do this, you know. Kill it. Um, okay, wow. So, okay, uh, oh, Ald Scar in, there it is, I'm blind. All right, well let's go there real quick, shall we? And see what's happening. And if we need that, then that's worth adding today, I think, for sure. And, yeah, I'm just a goof that <laughs> misunderstood the issue. Roman brought that up to me months ago, and I just misunderstood that. So, Hopefully I typed that right. Yeah, and so Gonzo, and a quick addendum to that, removing the master, you would then convert back from YAML to OMW add-on to finish the circle of life, so to say. All right, so here we are. Something should be obviously wrong, I would think, unless Danae fixed this upstream. <laughs> we got, speaking of fixing upstream, we have the famous... Fishing rod impale that uh, Ferris did make a fix for on Discord. I was just a slow poke. Okay, well, I don't think we need this anymore, actually. Here's our lady. Let's try it with total overhaul, shall we? Just for completion's sake. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a comment on there saying this much. Oh, come on, please. There we go.
Okay, yeah. I don't know if this is still needed. We're about to find out. Okay, yeah, it looks like this has been fixed. Because here's our lady. She's looking okay. So, cool. Yeah, there have been, I think, in this time, doing Todd's work. Amen. I think in seven months, there have been quite a few FNF updates. Thankfully, Danae, being the superhero that she is, um, you know, took care of it. So, I'll go ahead and update this, actually. And uh, there we go. We can check that one off. That's another close as we don't need to do it. Well, when it kind of bled into the uh, 6.x extravaganza. So let's... This one I think is a... A potential close, close one. Yeah, so let's round this out. So, um, as you may imagine, I didn't actually get to transcribing this into a GitLab issue. And I'm going to actually go ahead and continue just typing it into here. Um, and it is on the Git. This is all in a GitLab repo, so it's out there publicly. But uh, we'll officially have a... We'll probably have one issue for tracking all of these. And then what we'll do is in that issue on GitLab, we'll talk about specific things that you need to do, right? So for this one, we would talk about, um, you know... This one has a BCOM incompatibility, for example, with uh, the cave it tries to edit by Agnesis. You know, you have to actually write that change out. I should figure out how to do that with Delta Plugin. I just want to replace all of my TS3 command usages with Delta Plugin now. Um, you could you could do cleaning with Delta Plugin, too, if you had, like, a, a filter, a precise filter. You know, you could do cleaning. Um, anyway, just a thought. Yeah, okay, so we left off here at Mines and Caverns, actually. Magit. I learned people call it Magit. I always called it Magit, because, like, you gotta say Git, but people call it Magit. Magit. And it is, ma you know, it is, if you work with Git at all, you know, having a good Git client, which is what you see on the right here. You know, it's extremely valuable. Wow, yeah, we actually, we got pretty far. Just in two sessions, you know. Um, there, of course, is lots more to cover. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow, okay, here I was thinking that we got really far, and then I'm like scrolling down and looking at all that green. And the orange, of course, being things that are changed, too. There, there's a lot of stuff in there that's uh, falsely changed, but yeah. Ooh. Good, though. It's a good problem to have, you know. Anyway, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. But there are so there are some things um, that are changing that are not an addition of a mod. And one of those things I wanted to go over is... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not it. For beautiful cities of Morrowind, we are moving into use the waterworks patch, uh, but we're also going to be adding the Wolverine Hall, which is probably my favorite take on the Wolverine Hall in Sagerth Mora. I'll fire it up here and show you. It's just, I mean... Look at it. You know, just awesome. My favorite take on it, as I said. Um, however, when you're using Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, some manual editing of the main BCOM plugin is needed. And I wonder about how to present this to the user. I also wonder about getting RP's permission to redistribute a plugin, which, uh, you know, I'm not actually going to ask about that because it would we'll just get out of date. I don't want to be responsible for maintaining that. However, we can present the user easy copy-paste commands to patch 
their add-on. But I'm I'm wondering, Gonzo or anybody else there, if you have ideas about how to pr- how to present that to you, the user. I was thinking something like, uh, let's see if I can find a dirty something like I have for dirty plugins, where you can click this, and it expands a bunch of stuff. And I thought for for the Wolverine Hall. We could put a click to expand little section. It says, you know, run this on your BCOM plugin to to prepare it for use with this one. That's probably how I'm going to do it. Jumping a little bit ahead there, um, but yeah, that's something I thought about. Uh, click to expand sounds like a great idea for that. Thank you, Gonzo. Yeah, you know, because we just we don't want to load. Imagine loading the page with like this there, and you're just like. Oh God! What is all this? You know, um, I feel like this is just, you know, hey, here's the mod. Okay, all the information sits on the page easily. And oh, what's this? You know, and then you can see <laughs> the evil contaminations um, on this one. So cool. Okay, very cool. And yeah, well, since I mentioned it, let's go ahead and uh, let's check this out. And I will note too, I already mentioned this to Gonzo on Discord, but uh using this turn grass to and kelp and lily pads to ground cover method, um, you know, I gained significant I think I mentioned this earlier in the stream, I gained a significant FPS by using it. So this is a thing that we all want for sure. And I'm I'm I brought that up because I'm hoping that it makes the potato performance here a little bit more bearable. Until I get off my behind and put my gaming PC in here. All right, here we are. Good old it's stuck in the root. Just as Todd wills it. All right. Gonzo correctly says that FPS gain could be even more noticeable in some scenes with more ground cover. That's right. Turns out vanilla actually spans those little grass thingies like all over, you know, and the kelp is all over. And um, so it puts a lot of stuff on the rendering happy path, you know, on the ground cover happy path for rendering, which makes it cheaper. All right, I kind of took the long way around, forgive me. But yeah, you can see here, Wolverine Hall looking good, just looking good. Um, you know, BCOM itself comes with a new take on the Wolverine Hall, which is good, very good. <laughs> Gonzo says, I love the rendering happy path. We all do, man. We all really do. Uh, and I believe it was A. Kartanov and a number of people, um, bzz, if you remember, bzz, and a couple of other people that worked on ground cover, and we have them to thank for this loveliness. So, yeah. Um, you know, really... I just want to show you guys a building for five minutes and the game has to rain on me, really. Please, just give me some sun. <laughs> That's all I'm asking for. Okay. That'll also maybe give me some frames back. But uh, again, yeah, BCOM's take on the structure is good, you know. Um, it's better than vanilla, I think, but this just it really takes the cake. Oh wow, look at this! This is a good, this is a good new thing. Well, I'm glad we caught this on the stream. <laughs> look at this! So this is another thing that we're gonna need to handle. I guess it comes probably from a BCOM update, if I had to guess. Let's see. Yeah. Well, there we go. Um. So chances are, yeah, there's a 18.3 cell change we need to nuke from BCOM. We'll need to update the script that Random Pal provides with Wolverine Hall. I'll probably do that later. For now, that will keep those Telvani out, right? Like, oh, crap. Give me the magic spell for moving stone bridges. I don't know. <laughs> That's the lore-friendly explanation for that Toddism. Whoa, and as I get a, a, up to the door here, that's not right. I don't think we're going in there right now. Hold up. Hold up. This is another... Yeah, whoops, indeed. Holy moly. Uh, this is another patch I had to make, though, was to patch the um, teleport, the uh, fast travel points, which was not a change that came with uh, Random Pals 
TES3 command soup that he recommended. And I wondered if it was because of just a Delta plugin merging quirk. And I intended to run uh, TES3 merge, which actually has a Linux build now, can actually read OpenMW config files. Uh, but it crashed when I ran it, and I didn't spend any more time trying to run it. So, But it's something I would like to do. I'm curious. How does you know Null Cascades program handle this situation where we have... Yeah, here we go. Uh, we have the dupe uh, teleport points here. And so what I did to fix this was basically you nuke the NPC record for this NPC from BCOM. The one in Wolverine Hall mod is identical and you just take that one and you don't have uh, it's identical minus the spawn point which is correct the second one I think is the one we want nope not the one <laughs> well it is the one but like the two interiors are merged I almost wonder if I didn't did I not hold on a minute I think I might have goofed here let's take an exciting dive into how I update beautiful cities of Morrowind I've got this little handy dandy shell script right here and so what I do is we're gonna do it right now just to show you in action but yeah so I do a few things I prepare a folder a specific folder for my patched main plugin of beautiful cities of Morrowind I copy that into there because we need to patch it uh, later on for Wolverine Hall stuff um, and yeah then then we just uh, if there's a Morrowind anti-cheese update I'll clean that down below also. But yeah, we just run. This is the stuff that RP provides with Wolverine Hall to run. But then I found we needed this too as well to fix the duplicate spawn points. Which you just saw that I had, which makes me think I forgot to do this. So we're going to do it right now. And you can see the magic happen. Version 299 of BCOM just released yesterday, I think. There we go. Nope. And the idea is to do as little work as possible for things that are repetitive, right? I have to do this every time BCOM updates. BCOM thankfully updates a lot, um, but I don't want to do this every time, right? So I just kind of months, cities up. Uh, Cities, beautiful cities of Morrowind. And then I just run my shell script. And it does everything. And I just, it's a, just a one button approach to doing things that are, you know, got to be done. Okay, so now let's load that back up again. And see, did I goof here? <laughs> it's very possible I goofed. I might have updated BCOM and didn't run my magical script. Very well, could have done that. But yeah, again, this automates patching BCOM for the Wolverine Hall. And also cleaning more wind anti-cheese. Scratcher, hey, welcome. Uh, I'm glad you made it here. Thank you for joining the chat. It says, I do not use the site much. <laughs> Didn't know my own login. Link from YouTube where I was linked from GitLab, I think, where I was linked from modding OpenMW. Hey, welcome. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining the stream. And uh, yeah, we're just checking out some stuff, mods and OpenMW, so thank you for joining. We're actually looking specifically at some beautiful Cities of Morrowind compatibility stuff. Um, yeah, sounds like a really good journey, honestly, so welcome, and again, I'm glad you're here. Get comfy. We're just uh, modding OpenMW like we always do. Oops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, and, I'm, and me personally, I'm fat fingering everything. I shouldn't be allowed to use a keyboard some days. All right, here we go. So let's walk up. I'm pretty sure I might have goofed this one. Uh, uh, oh no, it looks, it still looks really bad. Uh, wow, okay. Holy moly. That's no good. <laughs> All right. Scratcher says, about 3 a.m. last night, your latest upload to YouTube introduced me to Emacs. Life changed. Wow, okay, cool. That's <laughs> that's a rare statement, but I'm very glad. Uh, I remember when I was introduced to Emacs. It changed my life. Uh, uh, you know, 
welcome again. And yeah, feel free to chat it up. And I'm really glad that uh, I'm really glad that you know. I'm curious also about what about Emacs really? Because most people see it and they're like, "Why do you use that?" I know it's got a fireplace. I still don't care. But when I first learned to use Emacs, it was on the job. And I witnessed one of the programmers doing something mind-blowing with it. And that was it. Yeah, wow, this is really, wow. So what we have here, folks, <laughs> what we have here is apparently the edits to Wolverine Hall from BCOM and from uh, Wolverine Hall. I have, must be doing something wrong here. Bear with me on one more potato adventure. I think I have a misconfiguration to bury the lead in my expanded vanilla. I think I didn't, didn't put the folder path for the plugin in right or something. You saw it though. My script worked. <laughs> yeah, but the coolest thing for me about Emacs for everybody's edification was seeing the programmer. We were debugging a, a problem in the software and we had like a running instance of it and he connected Emacs to the running instance of the software using something that's uh, a plugin for Emacs called Slime, which is a, a common Lisp development environment. And it was just amazing. Like we could change anything about the application while it was running right there in the console and had cool little animations and everything. <laughs> so yeah, in a nutshell, Slime is what just made me like, Whoa, about Emacs. And then I never looked back. Am I still stuck in the... Okay, here we go. Going off the Emacs deep end. All right. Yeah, there you go. I go I just goofed. Ooh, maybe I should report this to MD though, huh? Y'all seeing this? Floating... Uh, what's this? Is uh, Sprouts. Floating Sprout. Schedule says, I'm just over Windows, and you just seem to have super control over Emacs. You were editing, managing files, running OpenMW, changing OpenMW. It was nuts. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for noticing. And it's the reason the super flexible workflow is one of the reasons why I stick with it. I'll show you Slime in just a moment. I don't actually have Slime configured. I very rarely work with Common Lisp, actually, unfortunately. Yeah, so this is how it's supposed to look, by the way. And it's just glorious. Like... Hats off to Vegito, Random Pal. You know, your work is just exquisite. And it's what keeps me coming back to this game. Gonzo says, I was a nano kid. Hey, I learned how to type in the terminal on nano. I was too afraid to use VI. True story. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, look at this. This is great. Okay, so I must have goofed. Um, my expanded vanilla configuration is obviously wrong. And just to demonstrate what I was talking about with the teleport points, <laughs> Gonzo says VI is nightmare fuel. Well, it is when you're used to your standard, like, Control-C, Control-V kind of, you know, nonsense. Uh, sorry, not nonsense. All text editors are nonsense. Here we go. Fixed travel point. Boom, just one. Afane, I don't judge. I know people at work that use VI since the 80s, and it works for them. Yeah, absolutely. I use VI uh, for quick editing, you know, and actually I, it's definitely fair to say, and here you go. This is what it's supposed to look like. If I open a really large file with VI, it opens like this. But if I open a really, like, say 500 megabyte size YAML file with Emacs, it will take 10 minutes. And I know this from experience. So yeah, cool. Wolverine Hall mod is just exquisite. It takes a little bit of manual editing. You're able to mess it up as I have done, obviously. And have the completely wrong thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Just as I thought. That is an insane load time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's so what's happening is the LSP was like scanning the file, you know, and that's like a Ruby program or something, you know, Python or something, you know. So, like, imagine running like 500 megabytes of text into Python, you know, just don't even try it. <laughs> just don't even try it. Even if it was Rust or Go, though, like it would take a ton of memory, you know, and it would not be a cheap process. Uh, okay, so let's. And yeah, so I got this folder path right here, Waterworks Core. 
patched for the Wolverine Hall. This is what I'm missing here. I'm a big goof. I remember the days when opening a one gigabyte file would crash nearly all editors at the time. If Fane says, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I do too. I do too. For sure. Uh, okay. Just as a sanity check. Um, let's go look at this in Expanded Vanilla and let's witness the glory. And yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually a relatively caveman Emacs user too. A lot of people will like... You know, I don't even read my email in Emacs. What is wrong with me? You know, um, a lot of people just do everything that they can in there, and I like to keep it strictly related to editing. I will sometimes use the shell, but I also have my terminal here, as you can see in the background. <clears throat> if you encounter cleaning a mod during this stream, can I ask you to draw special attention to what you're doing? Bang a pot or something? Schedule? Well, actually, um, we were kind of talking about it a little bit earlier, but if you would like a little bit of uh, discussion about it, I'm happy to go there in just a moment. Um, it's a puzzling topic, and yeah, I'm happy to demystify. All right. Yeah, I swear, even with just the vanilla textures, Morrowind enhanced textures, this game is just beautiful. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. But yeah, maybe we should report this to MD. I feel like he wanted to know about floater incompatibilities with BCOM. Um, but this would be it right here. Gonzo, can you file an issue for that, please? I appreciate it. Thank you very kindly. Whoa, that's still not right, though. <laughs> All right, well, something is further goofed with my setup there, and we'll leave it at that. You saw the working thing in, in uh, Total Overhaul. Very nice. And, uh, yeah, that's why I want to edit, so... Kind of jumped all over the place there on that one. But, uh, okay, so Scredger, really quick, uh, wanted to hear about cleaning. Cleaning a mod, what is it? Why do you do it? If you have a specific question, otherwise I'm just going to jump right into it, but if you have a specific question, let me know. So, actually, incidentally, we are here looking at a mod that needs to be cleaned. And um, this one in particular is a good example of a really needs to be cleaned. Turn my music down a little bit. Get that near of our rising choir from the Starwind soundtrack or Starwind, uh, Skywind. Excuse me. Sten, filthy mod. You are a filthy mod. Welcome. I'm glad you finally made it. You lazy bum. So we're talking about uh, cleaning a plugin, and what is it? No specific question. I was following one of your lists and absolutely did not get that step for several mods. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, it turns out it's actually. Hard to understand unless you know about the inner workings of the engine. What is dirty? What is a dirty plugin? How does it affect your game? Why should you care? All very fair questions. So, Mask of Dagothor is a dirty plugin. And what I mean by that is, it has taken a step back. When a plugin is dirty, it has changes inside of it that are the same as a change from something it depends on. So in this case, it has a bunch of changes that come from Blood Moon and Tribunal that are set in Blood Moon and Tribunal, and it sets identically to Blood Moon and Tribunal for no reason, really. Why does it do this? This is something that happens when you edit a plugin in the vanilla Morrowind construction kit. It will just automatically silently add changes like this to your plugin. So, like, there's a good chance that Shadow Mimicry, our friend here, didn't even know this happened. You know, we just... Hitting control S, you get all this for free from Todd. The gift that keeps on giving. So, so, um, but other things can happen too. You can have duplicate objects. Uh, there's a, there's a, a kind of a list of things that happen that can make a plugin dirty. And for the best explanation of what all that is, I would tell you to do uh, clean. So, uh, open up your command prompt. You got TES3 command installed on your machine and type TES3 command clean help and this is going to show you from the words of the program itself you have to scroll down here uh, a little bit to the description section here and it says cleans plugins of various junk the goal of the clean command is that it should always be safe to use blah 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 much of what is considered dirt is with respect to a plugins masters again it's duplicating something that is set by Morrowind itself for no reason a lot of times you see water height or ambient lighting changed in plugins. 
again, for no evident reason, you know, it's entirely possible that a mod might do that, though. So this is why you don't want to go into cleaning blindly and just be like, no, I absolutely must clean everything that is possibly dirty, you know, because if we look at one of my own mods, which is a patch that I made, and we can actually convert... We'll just really quick clean this one, and I'll show you. This is a dirty plugin. Gasp, it's dirty. Johnny doesn't know what he's doing. This plugin is dirty. Oh my god, pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. Okay, data files. <laughs> Shh, that didn't happen. No laughing. All right, uh, again, yeah. wine prefix. Okay, task. Oh my god, it's dirty. There's duplicates. Johnny doesn't know anything about anything, and that's true. I won't deny it. But actually, this is a case where you don't want to clean it because if you clean this, it will break the game. There's two like fence tops that need to be duplicated for reasons that I can't explain and don't really care to understand um, because our man Zach has actually implemented a Lua-based version of this, so it doesn't even matter. But this is still a good um, scientific example of, well, yeah, you can actually clean something, and this looks really bad. Duplicate object, this seems really bad. But it's fine. I hope I didn't go too far off the deep end there, Scratcher, but yeah, long story short, cleaning is just removing changes that were probably not intended to be in a plugin. And in some cases, it can actually really break things really badly. If we look at, for example, um, pickpocket rebalance has dirty changes. The same changes from Blood Moon and Tribunal we saw in Mask of Dagothur. And this could break certain things that are set by other mods. You don't want any of these. This has nothing to do with pick pickpocket rebalance. None of it. You know, and you can tell. So, but yeah, you can't. The point of it is bad things get included into plugins by mistake sometimes. Um, you have to fix those things, but it's not always bad in a nutshell. Please feel free to ask any other questions, and I hope that helped. All right. That was a fun, that was a fun little sidestep there. Uh, back to the magic. No, magic. Let's try it again. Open MW. Here we go. No. Oh, Jesus. I am failing big time. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Don't try this at home. Scratcher, you so you find the exceptions by trial and error, I guess. Bug detective work. Exactly. Uh, you have to the big takeaway is you have to pay attention to what's going on. You don't just simply run the cleaner and just, you know, la, 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 and hope that everything is good. You have to actually look at what it's doing and then, you know, like, for example, when I was preparing this for release to the public, I cleaned it, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when I saw this, I was just like, huh? No, no way I did a... No way I did a dirty change. So, yeah, anyway, so I hope that was um, useful. And, yeah, definitely watch it on, on the YouTube when I upload that later on. So, very good question. I'm happy to cover it. And and we need to, like, we need to, like, take that segment and put it on the website or something. Or we'll do an official, you know, cleaning Q&A video. So, anyway. Back into this. Uh, let's see here. Where do we, where did we leave off? You did a pretty deep dive on it a couple of weeks ago. I thought Gonzo Games. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally remembered that too. I just couldn't remember. So here's the thing. I'm really bad. If I do something like that in the stream, I'm really, really, really bad about remembering when I did that basically and, and notating it, you know. So I guess all we can do is be better in the future. Okay, so going back to new stuff that we're adding. Back to it. Um, I can't exactly remember where we left off here. Let's... Caves, right? Mines and caverns is what we got over there. Let me just find my place in my file here. Ifane says, yeah. 
basic tool usage explanations as short, concise YouTube videos embedded on the website would be very cool for normal users. Yeah, that's great feedback. Thank you. And that's actually something Gonzo and I have been planning. Um, I've been sort of planning it for a minute, and then Gonzo brought it up uh, doing like CS tips, OpenMWCS tips. Um, it's not exactly common knowledge, but OpenMWCS is very capable as a tool for creating mods right now. Um not quite capable enough to produce Tamriel Rebuilt, but it's like inches away, honestly. So, uh, yeah. Amen to that, Afan. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see here. Uh, we'll do it. Consider it a goal of the project. And, uh, you know, I kind of really like making concise inform informa uh, informational videos. If you saw my... Um, I have like a sub two-minute video on using the launcher to install a mod. And I actually pride myself in the concise you know, length of that uh, video. It's just like everything you need to know in under two minutes. That process basically applies to everything, except for I don't go into like BSA activation, but I mean, if you're slightly curious, you can find that tab on the launcher. Uh, okay. I can't exactly find where I left off, but I mean, Mountain of Fear. Oh, no, no. Where, wait, whoa. Whoa. Got to go way down here. Get with the program, man. New Illinibi. That's old. Normal maps. Old. Without an eight-minute channel intro with music? That's heresy. Yeah, hey, <laughs> Fane, you touched a little bit on why grumpy old me doesn't really like a lot of videos. Um, I just want to get to the meat of something, you know? And so, yeah, that's what I was going, definitely going for with my how to install a mod video. No frills. You don't even hear my voice. Just some music from uh, some quiet-ish music from Tamar Rebuilt soundtrack, if I recall. Sotha's Amulet. We're getting there. We're getting there. Justice for Cartag. Cave Rats. Cephalopod. We had a good discussion about that. Repopulated. Oh, yeah, this reminds me, Vivek, Vivek Illuminated, our friend Glass, he had a great question in the Discord chat that I didn't actually get to responding to, my bad, um, about Vivek Palace Illuminated. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that mod, not this one, Illuminated Redux, to be clear, this is the, the precursor to this Redux one, that just spammed lights, like, I think there's like 30, 40 lights right there on the stairs, and it's, you know, it's pretty bad. So I wonder if they're still talking about this one or if they're talking about the OG, you know, one with tons of lights because I can't believe this is too much of a problem. Maybe it is. I should benchmark it. Okay. Anyway, little diversion. Magic Rock. Did I get to that one? No, 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 no. Okay. Pickpocket rebalance. Hey, Fane. That should work. All right. Caves and Dungeons. Here we go. This is where we left off. Lots of good stuff here. This is like the most of all the new content that we're adding to the list. I feel like the Caves and Dungeons section is one of the most exciting, um, you know, parts. And I'm realizing, too, that we – I skipped over all these. We'll jump back up and get to these after I just – talk about awesomeness in the caves but yeah i mean we have so much cool stuff here better dunmer strongholds on the dungeon side but add a numeran reclaimed we're bringing mamea awakened back into the mix which is just an outstanding take on mamea with a cool quest some cool puzzles and all kinds of uh just one-off cave mods focusing on caves you know just it's caves 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 it's gonna be a really great update for people who like to explore for sure so okay um yeah, I see I kind of I jumped down from Mono's Minor Monodies mesh improvement. Jumped down to uh, Mines and Caves, but I caverns, but I forgot to cover some of these ones, including Nordic Dig on Fell by our friend Random Pell. Oh, no, I found two more floaters, Gonzo said. Gonzo said, is that with the sprouts, uh, the saplings, MD's saplings? And was that in Sadrith Mora? 
I think they did a pretty good job of like when that saplings mod first came out, there were tons everywhere with BCOM and they really like cleaned them up pretty good. So yeah, this one, Nordic Dangon fell. This is such a nice touch for the city that is kind of oft overlooked. It's not too important for the story and it's just like way up on the north side. And yeah, this actually makes it into um, a properly Nordic settlement. I'll just take you in game and show you. But uh, yeah, we'll put this one on the list. It is for sure on there. But before I go in game, there's an, a quick addendum to this that we're going to have too. Uh, yeah, Nordic Dagenfell NPCs. Yes and yes. Same ref ID even. Okay, wow. Okay, interesting. Well, there you go. Yeah, so we may want to... I, As far as I recall, MD likes to be pinged about those kinds of a thing. So maybe we go into his Discord and, and in the Saplings channel bring it up as a BCOM incompatibility. I might actually try it. Uh, before we do that, we'll load it up with just saplings and just BCOM just to make sure there's not some other issue, you know, before we bug MD. Okay, and, and then, yeah, so again, going along with this one, uh, does he have it linked in here? Yeah, boom, right there. Going along this one, with this one, Nordic Dagenfell NPCs. And this uses some uh, Tamriel data assets to kind of dress up things uh, more Nordically, for lack of a better word. Um, we should see it in game. We really should. So let's do, let's do that. Okay. Um, and I'm feeling expanded vanilla. That's what we're rolling with. And there, uh, this is a town that had, uh, this town with this mod had a conflict with better ships and boats that yours truly has patched. One of the nice touches of this one, though, adds a Nordic ship to the dock. Um, and man, it's a really nice asset. Um, and I will say, too, the Galleon that they added to Vivek, also maybe I'll jump over there, but the OAAB Data Galleon, Wow, that's a sweet model. That's a really sweet model. Okay. And yeah, here we are. So this is that uh, Nordic boat I was mentioning. It's pretty cool. And this one too. What is, is this a new OAB data? No, MD. Oh, cool. Search for the White Wave. That's another one that's going to be on 6.x quest section. We didn't quite get there yet, but yeah, there you go. Nice. <laughs> Haven't been over here since before I added that one. But yeah, you can already notice the shacks are a bit more Nordic, right? Not just like the Dunmer Swamp shacks you see in Sedanine, you know? This is not just like the Northerners Sedanine, you know? It's, it's a bit more distinct. We got some weather happening here, too. Ooh, did you see that lightning? Yeah! I was just hoping for some lightning. Boom! <laughs> yes. Yes. I just got to sit here and let this happen for a minute. And, uh, and I want to say thanks again to Zach for helping me work this one out. The uh, lightning rod replacer stuff. This will be, when the lists move over to 0 0.49, this will be something that we get, which is um, Magical Lua Lightning Rod Replacers. Would be these guys right here. This one and this one. We put those uh, OAAB data rods in there, and we get the lightning. So, okay, cool. Awesome. Love it. That little underappreciated northern part of the map gets a lot of love with the changes that we make. All right, put the link in here, and we're kind of running out of time here. But yeah, just random pal doing the thing again where they fill in the gaps, you know, um, very tastefully, and I love it. All right, what else? Uh, Redania Restored. Yeah, okay, this is a good one by R0. Just another one of those ones where you have um, 
the game mentions something that <laughs> is not in the game, and that would be the the village at Redania. And so, yeah, R zero made this mod, which we will be adding. Uh, Gonzo says, "All right, I did a few laps around Sagrath Mora, and those were the only three I could find documented on the issue. Nice, very nice. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Yeah, very good work." Um, so, yeah, coming back to this one, though, Redene Restored. Um, so it's a neat idea, right? A simple thing. And when it's in the game, you wouldn't even know it wasn't, you know, uh, something Todd forgot. Is what we'll say happened. Um, but in, a, in any case, one unfortunate thing about this is that... We'll fly up there. Uh, one unfortunate thing is that it depends for it depends on vanilla mushroom sizes and, and geometry for the placement of a ladder. And with the mushroom tree replacer mod that we all know and love, it, that was like an awkward floating ladder. It was actually the first pa patch I made for the total overhaul patches. It was the patch that started the patching fury. <laughs> um because it just bugged me. I saw it. I wanted this mod, but it bugged me. And so I played around with different ways of fixing it and eventually settled on lifting up the mushroom a little bit without having to change the ladder itself at all. For whatever reason, the mushroom tree replacer shrooms are just like set lower, I guess. Different origin point. Anyway, that makes them weirdly incompatible with vanilla layouts. Um, I'm surprised more things don't look weird, to tell you the truth. Anyways, whoa, we need to move a little bit faster than that. Let's fly on over here, just across the sea from Urshalaku Camp here. And yeah, it's, you know, it's described in the game, but conspicuously, conspicuously missing from the game itself. And the offending mushroom, I know you're all dying to know, the number one picture I've got on the total overall patches would be this one. This is the offending mushroom. And yeah, I just raised it up a little bit. And you can't even tell, right? It doesn't even look like I raised it up because these things have just like a, they go down really deep. You know, we're like under the ground here, but you can see like this was like down here even, you know, there was a lot of room to raise it up. It was like a, this was a, whoa, whoa, sorry about that. This was like, the gap was like a foot, two feet, you know, a meter maybe even for my uh, metric using friends. It was off, enough to be very awkward. So anyways, Redani Restored, uh, not an issue for expanded vanilla users, but it will be on that list. So yeah, let's plug that one in, shall we? And uh, I just want to say too, really quick, I'm super stoked to play around with this Lua Multimark mod. Thank you again, Zach, uh, for rising to the call. Mad props. Just I'm, my mind is blown at the implementation of the menu too. That's so awesome. I'm like want to implement that for my mods now. That's so cool. Uh, we talked about a signpost travel mod that is inspired by the Witcher Three travel system that I would like to implement myself um, in my copious amount of free time that I have. Um, and yeah, the coming up uh, advent of easy custom ground cover thanks to Benjamin Winger and his work on Delta plugin which I'm really excited to share with everybody once it matures a little bit but I'm successfully using it for an FPS gain okay the Wolverine Hall this is the one we already took a look at this one um it's spectacular. I've seen a lot of takes on the Wolverine Hall in my day. Um, and yeah, this was just a oof, bug bit me or something. Uh, this is just, in my opinion, the best take that we've got on the Wolverine Hall. Just outstanding. So yeah, very happy to plug this one in here. And so for tomorrow, folks, you can expect more work on the list here. Um, I want to try and get 5.8 out the door. Uh, we've got a lot of good stuff in there, including proper sorting of the plugins. We've added in the patch JFK OAB shipwrecks mod and a few other things to fix the experience for folks out there. Whoa, whoa, what am I doing here? 
getting a little ahead of myself. Oh yeah, we need the we need the link. Uh and so tomorrow, yeah, we'll just keep forging on with this. If I can, like, just let's see, where are we at here? Forty-eight thousand lines, okay. And if I just scroll down, so we got about a thousand and a half lines worth of changes to go through in my config. We'll skip through a lot of those. It sounds worse than it is, honestly. But uh, quite a few new things, yeah. Just uh, like this one. We did this already. We swapped out splash screens for Gonzo's, but actually I've noticed a few um, mods that provide like all Alexia voice mod has a splash screen that we probably want to disable. It doesn't really fit. It's very awkward to pop up with Gonzo's excellent splash screens. It's like a kind of old school one pops up and looks pretty awkward. So we'll want to mention that in the mod now, you know, um, stuff like that. We'll have to be thorough about when we actually put it into the GitLab issue. So, um, but yeah. Oh, and the auto setting of gameplay. I think you may recall if you were with us last week, I'm going to be releasing a gameplay configuration, just a quick Lua mod to conf auto configure some mods on the list. Can easily skip it if you wanted to do things yourself. Um, so yeah, just a ton of changes coming. We've gone through just a tiny fraction of it. Uh, looking forward to more 0 0.49 wizardry. Airships, multi-mark, signpost travel, all kinds of amazing things. Um, I thank you for joining me again, and happy modding to everybody, and have a lovely day. Cheers. <laughs>